A panel of U.S. judges is determining whether to revoke a nationwide halt to the Trump administration's travel ban. From Washington, Zoe Daniel reports. Farah Amir Kamal was working as an interpreter for the U.S. military in Iraq when she was brutally punished for it. My life was in danger every day when I leave the base and my work. My father got kidnapped and my husband got killed. It took her six years of vetting to get into America with her two sons. She was expecting her brother and his family to finally follow today. Now they're stuck in Jordan. Uh, him and his wife and his daughter, um, they don't know what happened now. Today, the legality of the temporary suspension of President Trump's travel ban was in question. This judgment was well within the president's power as delegated to him by Congress. We had families that were separated. We had longtime residents who could not travel overseas to visit their families without knowing that they would be uh, able to come back. Separately, a broader appeal against the constitutionality of the executive order could go all the way to the Supreme Court. Hopefully it doesn't happen. It's common sense. You know, some things are law, and I'm all in favour of that. And some things are common sense. This is common sense. While he battles the judiciary on the one hand, on the other, the president is doing everything he can to convince the public that the measures are needed to keep would-be terrorists out of the country, accusing the media of deliberately playing down the level of risk by failing to adequately cover more than 70 terror attacks. That includes Sydney's Lindt Cafe siege and the Paris attacks of 2015. They were seeing these attacks not get the spectacular attention that they deserve. Another incident listed, the fatal stabbing of British backpacker Mia Alif Chung near Townsville was not a terrorist attack and Mia's mother is outraged. I didn't want her death to be used in that way and I wanted to point out the facts. I mean, Ayad was not an Islamic fundamentalist. My wife and uh, kids had, had PTSD at the time. It was very After difficult. four years in America, Farah has made a life with husband Michael. We are an American, we are free to choose, and uh, I, I believe, you know, home where the heart is, so that's here. She just wants her family to share it. Zoe Daniel, ABC News, Washington.